using Bear's Venetian Plaster is a fabulous way to create a three-dimensional surface that reflects both the light and dark shades of the same color. This technique will look beautiful in a dining room or a living room. The Bear Faux Textures Colors and Techniques Guide contains popular pre-selected colors for Venetian Plaster. However, you may also be able to color match your Venetian Plaster to other colors not found in the guide. Ask your sales associate in the paint department for more details on computer color matching Venetian plaster. The Venetian plaster technique is unique from all the other faux finishing options we have to choose from. One of the major differences is how you apply the product. Unlike other faux finishes, this product is applied with a trowel as opposed to a paintbrush or roller. Specifically, you will need at least a four inch wide flexible steel trowel. You'll also need a mud pan or a clean paint tray some 100 grit sandpaper along with several pieces of 400 or 600 grit sandpaper. Finally, you'll want to have some clean rags, a bucket of water and protective gloves. Now let's take a moment to discuss priming when using Venetian plaster. Good idea. If your surface has a reasonably clean coat of either a flat paint or a low sheen paint such as eggshell, then you can directly apply the Venetian plaster. However, if your surfaces have a higher gloss sheen, such as a satin, semi-gloss, or high gloss, you'll want to first apply Bear's Enamel Undercoater Primer and Sealer before applying the Venetian Plaster. This is because the Venetian Plaster may have trouble sticking to a higher sheen surface. Also, having a primed surface to work with will lessen the likelihood that imperfections will show through when you're finished. One gallon of Venetian Plaster will give you two coats of coverage for an average size wall, approximately 10 feet by 15 feet. Before we get going, we want to give you a few more tips. First, let's discuss our trowel. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to use a flexible steel trowel. Avoid using stainless steel trowels, as they can cause your Venetian plaster to have gray or dirty looking streaks, especially in the lighter colors. Next, you're going to need to prepare your trowel for this technique. Usually, trowels have sharp edges. We need to round all of these edges before we begin. A piece of 100 grit sandpaper will usually do the trick, but if you find that sanding is taking too long, you can simply run the trowel along a cement sidewalk or something similar, and then sand the trowel smooth. This is also important because sharp edges will create lines in your finish when you're applying the Venetian plaster. Once you open your can of Venetian plaster, you'll want to make sure that you keep the can covered with the lid or damp cloth while you're working. Likewise, cover your product filled paint tray with a damp cloth when you aren't loading your trowel. These simple steps will help to keep the Venetian plaster from drying out. Excess exposure to the air can cause it to crust, allowing dirt or debris to settle in the product and affect the finish. Okay, now that we've set the stage, let's get to work. We're going to apply two coats of Venetian plaster to our surface. Each coat has a slightly different application technique. Judy, are you ready to go with the first coat? I am. I've loaded my trowel with product and I'm going to hold it at a 15 to 30 degree angle as I pull and spread a thin layer of Venetian plaster across the surface. Work the Venetian plaster onto the surface using short random strokes. You want to end up with a fairly thin layer of product on the surface as you move from section to section. And be sure to clean off your trowel often. You want it to be free from nicks or rust or any dried Venetian plaster as all of these things can affect the final smoothness of your finish. After you've applied the first coat of Venetian plaster over your entire surface, you'll need to allow it to dry for at least four hours. Okay, our first coat is dry. Now you may notice that some of the wall is still showing through after the first coat. That's just fine and pretty normal. Judy will cover those areas right now with our second coat. For our second coat, we want to hold the trowel at a much steeper angle, about 60 to 90 degrees, like this. Now apply the second coat thinly using short overlapping strokes. And as Matt mentioned, we want to make sure to cover any areas we missed in the first coat. Also, we want to smooth out recessed areas and trowel or edge marks. And again, just as with your first coat, keep your trowel clean and free from debris to help ensure the smoothest surface possible.
Once you've gone over your entire surface completely with your second coat of Venetian plaster, you'll need to let it dry for about 24 hours before you move on to the next step. Now that we have applied both coats of Venetian plaster to our surface and they're completely dry, we can move on to the next step, which is called burnishing. Burnishing is basically rubbing or polishing the surface. It is done with a fine 400 or 600 grit sandpaper, and it creates a three-dimensional looking surface which enhances both the light and the dark tones of the Venetian plaster color. However, before you burnish, you need to decide if you're going to protect your surfaces. Right. While you don't have to protect the Venetian plaster, you may want to, especially if your surfaces are in high traffic areas like hallways or high moisture areas like bathrooms or kitchens. If you decide to top coat, you'll want to use Bear's Venetian Plaster Top Coat only, as it has been formulated specifically for use with the Venetian Plaster product to provide protection from both damage and mildew. The burnishing process itself is the same whether or not you decide to top coat. However, if you do decide to top coat, you want to do that first before you burnish. Let me show you how the top coat is applied. Apply the Venetian plaster top coat just as you did the first coat of Venetian plaster, using the trowel to apply it evenly over the surface. Once you've got your top coat on, you'll need to let it dry for at least 24 hours before you burnish it. Well, that looks easy enough. Also, keep in mind that your top coat may enhance or darken the color of your Venetian plaster, so it's a good idea to test it on a practice board just to make sure you'll be happy with the final appearance. Well, I see you're ready to do some burnishing, Judy. Yes, I am. Now, as mentioned a moment ago, this burnishing technique I'm going to show works the same way whether or not you've decided to add the Venetian plaster top coat. I'm going to start with a fine piece of sandpaper. Either a 400 or 600 grit will work best. And I start rubbing the surface in a circular motion. This method will work well if you're working smaller surface areas, but for larger areas like this one, you may want to consider using an electric sander. That's a very good time-saving tip. In fact, I'll use a sander on this wall in just a bit. Change your sandpaper often and remove plaster dust from the wall using a damp rag. Now if you're looking for an even higher polish, take your clean trowel and vigorously rub the surface again in a circular motion. It's the friction and the heat created by this rubbing that produces a more defined marble or polished stone-like appearance to your Venetian plaster surface. Well, Matt, here's the finished product. This is really amazing. This technique is a bit more work than some of the others, but the look is well worth the effort. No doubt, but it doesn't have to stop here. I prepared two practice boards earlier today. I wanted to show you how you can get another look by mixing in either Bear's Metallics or Pearl Essence products with the Venetian plaster. 
Now here is a look using Venetian plaster and the metallics accent. That's beautiful. It is, isn't it? And with this one, I use the pearlescence accent. These look great. Is there a recipe to this? Well, if you're going to use metallics, you want to use four to six ounces, which is between one half and three quarters of a cup, mixed with one quart of bare Venetian plaster top coat. With pearlescence, the mixture ratio is one half of a quart size container of pearlescence. That's about 16 ounces, mixed with one quart of Venetian plaster top coat. As usual, I recommend trying things out on practice boards like these before you start working on your actual surfaces. That's a great idea. Well, this has been quite a bit of information, so let's take just a few minutes to review the steps for creating a textured look using Bear's Venetian Plaster. To begin, prepare a clean 4-inch steel trowel by sanding off any rough edges or surfaces. Apply the first coat of Venetian Plaster. Dragging your trowel at a 15 to 30 degree angle across the surface. Begin smoothing out the Venetian plaster by dragging the trowel over the surface using long and short random strokes. Don't worry if you see the original wall surface showing through in certain areas. They will be covered up on the second coat. Allow the first coat to dry for at least four hours. For your second coat, load your trowel with Venetian plaster and hold it at a much higher angle than you did for the first coat. About 60 to 90 degrees will be about right. Skim the surface of the first coat, working the second coat into the recessed areas, as well as those areas where the original wall surface still shows through. Allow the second coat to dry for at least 24 hours before sanding or applying the Venetian plaster top coat. Next, sand your surface with either 400 or 600 grit sandpaper, rubbing it in a circular motion. For larger areas, you may wish to consider using an electric sander. Change your sandpaper often and remove plaster dust from the wall using a damp rag. If you desire an even more polished look, use the flat side of the steel trowel and burnish again using the same circular motion. The more you burnish, the higher the polish or sheen will appear. Completion times for Venetian plaster projects will vary depending upon the surface area you wish to cover. Project times will increase if you decide to protect your surface with Venetian plaster top coat. However, in most cases, you should be able to Venetian plaster an average size room in two to three days.